and your orders, United States of America, to all who shall see these presents, greetings. This to certify that the President of the United States of America has awarded the Purple Heart, established by General George Washington at Newburgh, New York, August 7, 1782, to Sassar Christopher M. Cavigas, United States Marine Corps, for wounds received in action on 10 March 2006 for service during Operation Iraqi Freedom, given under my hand in the city of Washington the 25th day of October 2023. Signed, Eric M. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. come from as far as Connecticut and as south as Florida uh, and then everywhere in between. So uh, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day and travels. I'm glad you got here safely and uh, hopefully you'll, you'll make that same safe return home. Uh, Sergeant Major Foley, thank you so much, sir, for, for looking out for me and uh, getting this thing coordinated with Headquarters Marine Corps. Ten Colonel Armstrong, again, thank you for allowing us to come into the house, uh, the House of Pain 2-6. So um, let me tell you a few things. I, I'm Gonna ask someone to keep me on a timeline here, Audie. If you could please, you know, help me because you know I get to. I don't talk much, but when I do, whoa, um, man, uh, so many thank yous to say uh, for folks. So um, Mike and Herb uh, was with me in Fallujah, uh, as many of you here are, right? Jeremy, Dan, um, whew, man. A little tickle here, Tony, Shannon, um, many of you guys were with us, uh, and I just want to thank you guys, right? Always strength in numbers, right? We've always reached out to each other, taken care of each other. You know, Mike and Herb, uh, we're like, heck yeah, we'll be honored to present this to you, and how fitting would it be to do it here at the, the 26 CP, right, the command post, in this phenomenal room, the Cooper Gettings room, again, kind of honoring our fallen, uh, both Iraq and Afghanistan. So. A lot of things have been running through my mind about this, right? It's only been 17 and a half years, not that I'm counting, right? But 17 and a half years since the incident, uh, which is tremendous. Uh, 2023 has been big for the Cabingas clan, uh, probably for everybody, right? Everybody's gone through a lot of struggles, a lot of strife, uh, but what's amazing is we're all here, right? And that's the probably the biggest thing about this award, as honoring as it is, is I'm here to receive it. Uh, unlike, you know, someone very near and dear to my heart, Bunny Long, um, who, who we lost that day, right? So Tony Shannon was with me and, uh, and Bunny. Um, we got to go to Bunny's gravesite in Modesto, California in, in May for Memorial Day. Very, very emotional. Uh, first time I've been to that site. Um, and what's really awesome uh, is that uh, Audie T. Cooper, right, who's one of my, probably, probably the best Marine I've ever worked with, uh, his good friend Aaron Darpinian also lives there close to Modesto and goes and checks on Bunny regularly as I've instructed him to do and manicure the lawn and have a shot at Jack Daniels and uh, so on and so forth. And then the previous 2-6 command gave me some coins. So uh, every March 10th, Aaron Darpinian goes out there, places his French Forger on his headstone and, and the coins, and takes pictures and, you know, of course, in true marine fashion, a shot to the head and some Jack Daniels. Um, so it's, it's a crazy year, very thankful, you know, uh, what I'll tell you all is uh, there's a crap ton of great men here today uh, that have imparted great wisdom and knowledge and quite frankly some beatings as well. Um, and I want to thank all of you guys, you know, uh, I got my best friend John Andreessen, he just retired last year, his old brother Jim, I went to recruit training with. P.J. Anderson, we're in Iraq together for a year, living with Iraqi scary people, doing crazy cool things, really, to be honest with you, it is pretty damn cool. 
um, right? And then uh, my fellow brother, right, from 2 6. And then uh, I can't forget the most grumpiest master gun ever, Jeff Grimes, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I know he's completely white, right? But that dude's my brother, right? So somehow, some way, we're like yin and yang. We're actually, we're probably like hair scene matches. We'll get together. <laughs> but during that day, 10, 10 March, it was, it was challenging, right? It was tough. A lot of things went south, and uh, what we did, what we were supposed to do as Marines, right? Boom, we consolidated, bam, we set the perimeter, bam. Then I started going batshit crazy. This lieutenant from Weapons Company, I don't know if you remember, Don Lynn. Don Lynn. Yep, he was like, we got it. I was like, you ain't got shit, boy. <laughs> and I was about to light him up just because you're so dazed and confused. But Herb ran up to me and uh, was like, hey, 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 you know, Staff Sergeant. And I was like, ah, he was like, Chris. And he gave me a picture of my sons that was singed right from the fire and the debris. And he was like, hey, hey, I thought you might want this. And that was the only thing that calmed me down. And of course, I collapsed on the ground and cried like a baby. Um, but the memories of all that stuff is it, it's irreplaceable, right? And having men like yourselves, right, to be there, uh, whether it was that March 10th, right, or uh, last year or yesterday, um, to always be supportive and loving and caring of not just me, but my family, right? So uh, I want to thank you all for taking the time to come today. You know, very, very fortunate to have such great friends and family. Yeah. And uh, I'm always there if you need anything. Um, one last thing I want to say is uh, the biggest award, right, though this is pretty tremendous, right, the biggest award is being able to come home to these two young men, right, be there for my sons and, and for Tina. So thank you all again for coming. Uh, oh, yeah, one last shout out. Fisher Artist is the youngest Marine in the room. I used to coach him in baseball, right, his dad was a pretty killer stud, one this Marine, and I uh, used to play ball with Orlando, so it's pretty sick that he could be here. So with that being said, we're going to break contact from here and go to Chow. Uh, if you got time to go to Chow, sir, sir, major, you guys are more than welcome to come. Uh, Tiff, PJ, thank you guys for coming, bringing your beautiful daughter. Uh, the oldest is probably in school, right? Please, so get educated. Right? <laughs> guys like me are not. Right. So we're getting ready to go out for the first time, my first combat mission, making way from Bar Barria to the ECP. It's all of like three clicks, but nonetheless, it's like dangerous roads that IEDs are getting set up on and there's snipers and all this shit. So we get out of the trucks, get ready to exit the base, right? Got to get the convoy brief. Now we got to make condition one for weapons, right? Head counts, everybody's good. Checkpoints, good. Get on the truck. It's 0430 in the morning. And we're getting ready to roll out of the camp, uh, the serpentine. So I get in there. I'm like, all right, Long, put on your, put on your MVGs. And he goes, what are those? <laughs> I said, what? He goes, I, I said, your night vision. Do you put your night vision goggles on? He was like, look, Staff Sergeant, I don't, I, don't, I ain't never seen those. I ain't never touched them. I said, boy, you're Motor T, you're 3531, you're a vehicle operator. He goes, I just came from school. And I was like. Get the fuck out of the seat! <laughs>